All right, what's going on everybody? Graphs. A graph is a nonlinear aggregation of nodes and edges. A node, also known as a vertex, may contain some piece of data, and an edge is a connection between two nodes. There are two types of graphs we're going to discuss, undirected and directed. An example of an undirected graph could be a social network like Facebook. Each node could represent a user, and if one user is friends with another user, well, we could establish a friendship, an edge, a connection between these two nodes. If two nodes are connected, they have what is known as adjacency. In this example, Larry is friends with Patrick and Sandy, so Larry has adjacency to Patrick and Sandy. Patrick is friends with Larry, Sandy, Spongebob, and Spongebob is friends with Sandy, Patrick, and Squidward, and Squidward is adjacent to only one neighbor, Spongebob. So a social network could be an example of an undirected graph. The other type of graph is a directed graph. A directed graph contains edges that will link one node to another. However, these are one-way connections. In this example, node A would have adjacency to node B, but not the other way around. However, it is valid to have one node pointing to another node, and that node could point back to the previous node. An example of a directed graph could be a street map. Let's say you're working on a travel app, and each node is a possible destination. These single edges could be one-way streets, and these double edges could be two-way streets. You can move back and forth between these two destinations. There are two popular ways to represent a graph, an adjacency matrix and an adjacency list. With an adjacency matrix, we could create a 2D array, one row and one column for each node. If we need to check to see if there's adjacency between two nodes, we would first find the index of the node we're beginning at, let's say A. So we would go to node A, and then find the index of the node we're trying to travel to, so B. So row A, column B. If there are no edges, this would be 0. If there is an edge, this would be 1. So since there's 1 here, within row A, column B, well there's adjacency from node A to node B. But if we take a look at row A, column C, this is 0, so there's no adjacency between A to C. But if there was, well we would replace this 0 with 1 then. Now there are pros and cons with the matrix. One of the benefits is that the runtime complexity to locate an edge is big O of 1, it's constant. All we have to do is find two indices. So we have to find the row and the column. However, the space complexity to store a matrix is big O of V squared. V as in the number of vertices that we have, but you could also think of that as N, N for the number of nodes, big O of N squared. So since we have five nodes, and five columns, we would have a total of 25 spaces. So the benefits of a matrix is that it's very quick to look up an edge, however a matrix uses a lot of room. So it tends to suit graphs that have a lot of edges. On the other hand, we have an adjacency list. An adjacency list is an array or array list of linked lists. Each element is a separate linked list, and each header within the linked list would contain the address of a node. If there's adjacency between one node and another, we would add the adjacent node to our linked list. So to find adjacency between two nodes, we would find the node that we're starting at. Let's see if B is adjacent to E. So we would locate index B and travel this linked list until we find the node that we're looking for. That means there's adjacency between nodes B and E. Even if there's a node that is not adjacent to any neighbors, we would still want to add it to our adjacency list, just in case we do update it. Here are the pros and cons of an adjacency list. The time complexity to locate an element is big O of V, V as in the number of vertices. You can also think of this as N, so this would be big O of N. To locate an edge, we would first access the node that we're beginning at by an index. So let's begin at B, and we are looking for adjacency between B and E. Since each element is a linked list, we need to traverse this linked list linearly until we find the node that we're looking for. So in that way, it's linear. However, a benefit of a list over a matrix is that they use less space. The space complexity of an adjacency list is big O of V plus E. V for the number of vertices, aka nodes, and E for the number of edges. So yeah everybody, those are graphs. A graph can be used to model a network. Each node is a piece of data within our network, and an edge connects nodes. So like I said, it's a popular way to model networks, which don't necessarily have any sort of order. 
So yeah, that's an intro to graphs, and in the next two topics, we'll create our own adjacency matrix and adjacency list. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any ideas of where else you could implement a graph, let me know in the comment section. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.